Hello, Shermanators. Here I am in my office. Welcome to my Shermanator office. So kiddos, on Monday, I read chapter one of Staggle Doodles and just a quick summary. So Miss Rooney is asking Emily and Linda Lorca to go to the storeroom and get a big box that had the initials INV, which we figured out was not invitations to Miss Vincent's wedding. Instead, it's a big box for inventions because April is invention month. And we talked about how that was a really good idea because Emily, first of all, was being very stubborn and she wanted to carry that big box all by herself and then she dropped it and all kinds of things fell out and they realized it wasn't invitations after all. So their prediction was wrong. So now we're gonna read chapter two and three. I'm gonna ask you to think about it and make some predictions as well. So here we go, chapter two. Spring is a time for new things, said Miss Rooney. Leaves on the trees, spring jackets. Emily reached into her desk. She pulled out little Uni, her little rubber unicorn. She galloped him across her desk. Then she looked out the window. Oh, fresh air, she said. She took a deep breath. Right, said Miss Rooney, and new inventions. Did you know that the safety pin was invented in the springtime? And Coca-Cola, said Miss Vincent, the student teacher. And erasers on pencils, said Miss Rooney. And baseball bats, said Beast. Really, asked Miss Rooney. Beast raised one shoulder. I don't know, I just took a guess. He said, it's baseball time. Well, we'll have to look that one up, said Miss Rooney. Good thinking anyway. Emily raised her hand. She was going to say that maybe bathing suits were invented in April or jump ropes. We're going to make our own invention, said Miss Rooney. Emily put her hand down. She didn't know one thing about making inventions. Miss Rooney went to the chalkboard. We'll work together in groups. Emily raised her hand again. She knew all about groups. She had been captain of a math group one time. Miss Rooney would let her be the head of the invention group. Hmm, not so fast, Emily, said Miss Rooney. She picked up a piece of chalk. Think, Miss Rooney wrote on the board. T-H-I-N-K, think with that digraph, T-H. Listen, she wrote again, and then she wrote share. She turned to the class. That's how we're going to work in groups, she said. Emily wished Miss Rooney would hurry up. She wanted to get to the inventing part. She wanted to hurry up and start thinking about what to invent. Yes, said Miss Rooney. It's really important that you learn how to work together. Sometimes we can get more done and, Linda Lorca raised her hand. If you have a big box to carry, and a couple of people to carry it, Linda stopped and took a breath, then it doesn't get dropped. You should cooperate. Right, said Miss Rooney. Snaggle doodles, said Emily under her breath. You know how she always likes to say snaggle doodles when she gets upset. In front of Emily, Beast wasn't paying any attention. He pulled out a piece of paper. Emily watched him draw a boy. The boy was wearing a baseball suit. Then he drew a baseball. The ball was landing on the boy's head. Clunk! Beast wrote on the bottom of the picture. Emily started to laugh. Oh, that beast. Beast was laughing too. I hope you're listening, said Miss Rooney. Emily sat up very straight. She tried not. She tried to stop giggling. <sighs> she wished she knew how to invent something. Now, said Miss Rooney, I think we're ready. She looked around the room. Hmm, Linda, she said, you can be the head of the first group. So here they are. I mean, you know Emily. She's got that snaggle doodles face and Beast, of course, and Matthew, and Linda Lorca. <sighs> Emily looked at Linda. Linda was smiling, mm, that Linda Lorca. She loved to be the head of things. Emily raised her hand fast, but Miss Rooney didn't call on her. She called on Jason and Wayne for two other groups. Snaggle doodles, Emily said under her breath. She looked down at her desk. She didn't want Miss Rooney to know that she had made a mad face. Next to her, Don Bosco made a mad face too. So I guess we can infer that she wanted to be a leader as well. I hope you remember what we said, Miss Rooney told them, about the groups and working together and leaders. Emily nodded a little. She didn't even know Miss Rooney had been talking about leaders. Maybe that was because she had been watching Beast Draw. It didn't make any difference though. Miss Rooney hadn't called on her to be a leader. She called on Linda Lorca. Linda Lorca probably would be a terrible leader Hmm. She hadn't even ever been a captain of a math group. So my friends, we can infer that Emily's feeling disappointed 
and upset and maybe a little jealous of her friend, Linda Lorca. We know there's going to be a problem because Linda is a leader. Chapter three, Emily followed Linda to the back of the room. She leaned against the science table. Alice Walker and Matthew came back to the science table too. Is everybody here? Linda asked. Of course we're all here, Lynn, Emily said. Four of us. Hmm. She wanted to say, can't you count? She didn't though, because that would be rude. She might think she was angry because Linda was the leader and she wasn't. Matthew leaned against the science table too. Emily tried to inch away from him. I think because maybe he might have smelled because you know Matthew wets the bed. Next to Beast, Matthew was the nicest kid in the class, but Matthew must have wet the bed last night. Mm. He did kind of smell like that almost every day. Linda Lorca was inching away from Matthew too, so she's kind of moving away. Miss Rooney called the rest of the groups. Jason's group went to the front of the room. Wayne's group sat on the side. Then Miss Rooney opened up the big INV box. That's a big invention box. Okay, let's see which group can make the best invention, she said. Miss Vincent went to the front to help Miss Rooney. A minute later, she came back to Emily's group. She dumped a pile of things on the science table. This is my special month, said Miss Vincent. It's your wedding, said Emily. Right, said Miss Vincent. April 28th. It's coming up. Are you having any flower girls yet? Linda Lorca asked. I already asked that, Emily said, a long time ago. Miss Vincent smiled. No flower girls. She went back to the front of the room. Emily thought about Miss Vincent's wedding. She wished she were Miss Vincent's flower girl. She'd be wearing a long pink dress. She'd carry a basket of pink flowers. She sighed. <sighs> she wished she could at least go to Miss Vincent's wedding. I hope I get to go to Miss Vincent's wedding, said Linda. Emily didn't say anything, although she was thinking it. She looked at the things on the table. There was a cardboard cereal box, two pink balloons, a red belt, a white plastic cup, two black socks, and a flashlight. Matthew picked up the balloon. He began to blow it up. Listen, Matthew, Linda said, let's not be putting our mouths on everything. There'll be germs all over the place. Emily looked over to the side of the room. Wayne's group was already starting to make something out of a pile of stuff on their table. Jill Simon had a pine cone in her hand. I don't know what to do with this, she was saying. And she looked like she was what, friends? Going to cry, of course. Oh, don't be a baby, Sherry Dent told her. Emily looked at the back, looked back at her own group. Matthew had put a green paper hat on his head. All he was doing was fooling around. He was making believe it was a drum. Alex Walker had a, held a dog's mask up to his face. He stopped, he began to make barking noises. Stop fooling around, Linda yelled. Let's get started, Emily said. This is my group, said Linda. I'm the one who says, let's get started. Ooh, Linda was getting very bossy, Emily thought. This was going to be a terrible group. They probably have a terrible invention. Emily pulled Uni out of her pocket. She stood him next to the fish tank. She wondered if Drake and Harry, the fish, knew what a unicorn was. Up in the front, Miss Rooney clapped her hands. I hope you're off to a good start, she said. Hmm, some start, said Alex. No start, said Matthew. Linda raised her hand. I can't get everyone to... This is a big project, said Miss Rooney. So here they are at the table. Of course, they're fooling around. You know, Linda's like, stop fooling around. Emily's kind of just, you know, looking. And there's Matthew blowing up the balloon. Not a good, great start here for the projects. You'll have to think about it. Next week, we'll work some more. And the week after. Just then the bell rang. Three times. Uh-oh. Three more times. Light up, said Miss Rooney. It's a fire drill. Too bad, Linda whispered. I just thought of a terrific invention. I even thought of a name for it. Emily lined up behind Linda. She put her finger to her mouth. Shh. Linda shouldn't be talking during a fire drill. It was against the rules. Emily marched out of the classroom. She wished Linda were the head of someone else's group. She wished she could think of a terrific invention. She wished she could think of a name for it. So that, my friends, is the end of chapter two and three. So... Make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen? Will Emily and Linda end up having an argument in front of the group? Will they think of an invention to make? Will Linda be a good leader? Will Emily contribute to the group? Can Matthew stop fooling around? I mean, what's going to happen in this next chapter? It's going to be tough because it is hard to be a leader. And if you remember, we talked about famous Virginians. We said, hey, we know that Thomas Jefferson, your third president, also invented many things. 
So I'll leave you on this note. Necessity is the mother of invention. So be thinking about what you might invent because it's coming up on next week's calendar. So until tomorrow, Shimmernator out. And that is the end of our lesson.